Barometer's getting low According to all sources The streets, the place to go Let's consider the main setup from this lecture, where V is a finite dimensional vector space over a field F. T is a linear transformation from V to itself. So that makes V into an F bracket X module. And applying the classification theorem for modules over a PID, we see that V is isomorphic to this direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. F bracket X mod the ideal generated by A1 of X, direct sum plus plus plus, F bracket X mod the ideal generated by a M of X. Now I want to talk a little bit about bases. So if we choose a basis for each cyclic module on the right-hand side here, we'll get a basis for V. And then once we choose a basis for V, we'll get a matrix for the linear transformation T with respect to this chosen basis. So let's recall, this is an example following proposition one in section 11.1. .1. What's a, a reasonable choice of basis for each one of these cyclic F bracket X modules? Well, if we take any polynomial A of X uh, that is monic, X to the K plus BK minus one, X to the K minus one plus 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 B one X plus B zero, where, okay, the degree is at least one. We know that's true here. And the coefficients are just elements of the field F. I don't want to use A, I, and A, J for the coefficients because we've already used those for these polynomials. So we'll call them B, K minus one up through B1, B0. Then if you take the elements one, X, X squared up to X to the K minus one uh, bar, these give a basis for the vector space F bracket X quotiented by the ideal generated by A of X, where what is X to the something bar? X bar is just x mod the ideal generated by a of x. So these are the images of these polynomials, x, x squared, x cubed, under the natural projection homomorphism from f bracket x to this quotient. All right, so uh, these form a basis. So in particular, the dimension of this vector space is the degree of this polynomial. And we know that when you take a direct sum, of vector spaces, the degrees are just going to add. So the dimension of V is the sum of the dimensions of these modules over on the right-hand side, which is the sum of the degrees of these invariant factors. So in particular, we know that A M of X, the largest invariant factor, is the minimal polynomial of our linear transformation T that gives V this F bracket X module structure. So the degree of the minimal polynomial is at most the dimension of V. So if V is an n-dimensional vector space, the degree of this minimal polynomial is at most n. OK, so now I want to talk about how making a choice of basis like this for each one of these uh, cyclic F bracket X modules gives a nice basis for V where we can write down the matrix of the linear transformation T with respect to this basis. So with respect to this basis, we chose in this example here, we can give a simple description of the linear transformation multiplication by X. So multiplication by X gives a linear transformation and we can give a simple description of what's going on. We have our basis elements. This linear transformation sends every basis element to a linear combination of basis elements. It sends one to X and x to x squared, and x squared to x cubed, and so on. x to the k minus 2 gets sent to x to the k minus 1, and x to the k minus 1 gets sent to x to the k. But we want to express that as a linear combination of these basis elements, which only go up to x to the k minus 1. But x to the k is minus b0, minus b1x, minus minus minus, bk minus 1, x to the k minus 1. Why is that? We'll just add everything over back to this side. And since x to the k plus bk minus 1, x to the k minus 1 plus 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 b1x plus b0 is 0, which is true because, OK, a of x is uh, in the ideal generated by a of x. So when you look at the, um, the image of this polynomial under the natural projection homomorphism, you just get 0 in this quotient. 
So when we put in bars for all of the x's in the expression for a of x, we're getting zero in this quotient. So, okay, so what have we seen? Multiplying by x acts in a very straightforward, not so complicated way on this particular choice of basis elements. So this means that we can write down a nice of this multiplication by x linear transformation uh, with respect to this basis. We've given an easy description of a choice of basis for f bracket x mod the ideal generated by this degree k polynomial a of x. We've seen that the multiplication by x map gives a linear transformation on this vector space, and we can describe it in a nice way. What is the matrix representing this linear transformation with respect to this basis? Well, if you think about the definition of what it means to take the matrix of a linear transformation, each column is telling you where each basis element is getting sent as a linear combination of our chosen basis elements. So we have this matrix where we have ones below on the diagonal, right below the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else in the first k minus one columns. And then the last column is giving us the negatives of the coefficients of the polynomial. Why? Because x to the k minus one is getting sent to this linear combination of one x, x squared up to x to the k minus one. All right, so this matrix is gonna play an important role in the rest of the discussion of rational canonical form. So it gets a special name. Let's say that a of x is a polynomial, x to the k plus b k minus one, x to the k minus one, plus 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 b one x plus b zero. This is just a monic polynomial in f bracket x. The companion matrix of A of X is this K by K matrix here, this matrix star, and it gets a name. This is script C sub A of X. So I'm going to pause and erase and tell you what happens. We have this decomposition of V as a direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. This discussion led to uh, for one cyclic f bracket x module, f bracket x mod the ideal generated by a of x, we saw that the linear transformation multiplication by x, which is the one that corresponds to the linear transformation t, gives us this matrix. So what happens when we make the analogous choices for each one of the cyclic modules in the decomposition of v? We know that V is isomorphic to this direct sum of cyclic F bracket X modules. And we're going to apply this procedure that we just described for the particular cyclic F bracket X module, F bracket X mod the, mod the ideal generated by A of X to each of these factors in the decomposition. So for each factor, we get a basis where the number of basis elements is the degree of the polynomial. We have this multiplication by x linear transformation, and we can describe how that linear transformation acts on these basis elements in a particularly nice way. So these basis elements, for each one of these factors, we're going to name them. We'll let bi be the elements of v corresponding to the chosen basis of f bracket x mod the ideal generated by ai of x. So in this direct sum, any of the elements correspond to V. So if we just take some elements inside one of the factors, they still correspond to some elements in V. So we're going to name those elements BI. T acts on V, T acts on these BI. So how does it act on these BI? How do you write down uh, a matrix representing the action of T on this set of elements of V? It acts by the companion matrix of AI. So maybe more precisely, you could say that you take these uh, elements 
in bi and you take their span and you get a subspace of v and t acts on that subspace how does it act the matrix of this linear transformation t with respect to this chosen basis of this subspace is the companion matrix of ai of x so now this is all about one particular set of these bi's let's say the union b of all of these bi's this gives them a basis of v because if you take a basis for each piece of your direct sum, taking the union of all those basis elements gives a basis for the direct sum. Why? I mean, it's really important that this is not just a sum of cyclic modules, but a direct sum. And now, okay, now we have a nice choice of a basis for V. We know how T acts on each subset of these basis vectors. What if we take the union of all of them with respect to this basis B, the matrix representing T is the direct sum of the companion matrices of the invariant factors. Okay, what is the direct sum of a bunch of matrices? You have your first, uh, let's say K1 being the degree of A1 of X, you have your first K1 vectors in the basis, you get a K1 by K1 matrix. Now those rows and columns, those are set. There's going to be zeros everywhere else there. Then you have your next K2 by K2 matrix. Now those two, those columns and rows are set, zeros everywhere else. Then your next matrix, your next matrix. What this gives is a block diagonal matrix. It's not a diagonal matrix because each one of these companion matrices is bigger than a one by one matrix. It's a K by K matrix, which could be really, really big. But it, if you treat each block is like one thing. You have things along the diagonal, these square matrices along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So what are these blocks? These blocks are these companion matrices of the invariant factors. So where are we? Where does this matrix come from? Once you have the invariant factors, A1, A2, up to AM, and they satisfy these divisibility relations. So there's this order to them where A1 divides A2, A2 divides A3. This matrix is uniquely determined by those invariant factors. If I tell you the invariant factors, you write down this matrix. There's no choice from there. And what do we know is that F bracket X modules up to isomorphism are determined by the invariant factors. So invariant factors determine the F bracket X module up to isomorphism. So uh, given a set, given an, um, if you wanna know whether or not two F bracket X modules are isomorphic, you look at the invariant factors. Once you have the invariant factors, you get a uniquely determined matrix in this form. This kind of matrix is really special. I'll pause and erase and give you the last really big definition of this lecture. We've seen how to choose this basis for V that comes from the decomposition in terms of the invariant factors so that the matrix of the linear transformation T is this block diagonal matrix where each block is one of the companion matrices of the invariant factors. This leads to the main definition of this section. A matrix is in rational canonical form if it is the direct sum of companion matrices for monic polynomials, A1 of X, A2 of X, up to AM of X, of degree at least one, satisfying the divisibility relations that come from this classification of modules over PID theorem. A1 of X divides A2 of X, divides, 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 AM minus one divides AM of X. These polynomials for such a matrix are called the invariant factors of the matrix. So we know invariant factors of an F bracket X module, these are the invariant factors of the matrix. So that's when a matrix is in rational canonical form. A rational canonical form for a linear transformation T is a matrix representing T that is in rational canonical form. So what have we seen so far? By making this set of choices for bases of each of the factors in this decomposition, we saw that T has a rational canonical form. So 
This matrix is in rational canonical form. And next time, we'll see that the uniqueness part of the classification for modules over a PID in terms of invariant factors shows us that in fact, this rational canonical form for this linear transformation T from B to V is unique.